Okay, we're going to start off with uh, something that really everybody entering college should know, but it's been my experience that uh, uh, a lot of people have either forgotten it or maybe you were out that day or uh, it was so long ago that, uh, that you never really learned it to, in, in the first place. So it's powers of 10 scientific notation uh, so, so that everybody's on the same page uh, starting off the course so that you can actually read the book and know what these numbers mean. Uh, I'd like to just go through a little uh, quick tutorial on uh, what scientific notation is and how to do it. Um, first of all, let me give you a justification. Okay, in science, we often deal with very large numbers, especially in astronomy. But also very small numbers. So in this course, for example, in Astronomy 1, we're going to be dealing with distances to the planets, the size of planets, uh, which are extremely large, of course. Uh, later on in Astronomy 2, we're going to be talking about distances to stars. Uh, but we're also going to be talking about very small things, like the wavelength of light, the size of atoms. And uh, so to be able to do that, you need a different way to write things. Uh, let me give you an example of why this is important. Uh, the sun is the largest and most massive object in our solar system. That's the reason it's called the solar system. If I wanted to write the mass of the sun, okay, how many kilograms are in the sun? Okay. Well, I could write it longhand. And longhand, it would look something like this. Okay. Two, zero, zero, zero. Kilograms. Almost ran out of board there. Okay. That's a two followed by 30 zeros. Okay. Now, that's a difficult number to write, but it's also a difficult number to read. But as anybody who's ever uh, you know, gotten a, uh, a, an incorrect check knows, that an extra zero or too few zeros mean, a, mean an awful lot. Okay. So for example, if, you, if instead of writing 30 zeros or reading 30 zeros, you accidentally put another zero on here. Okay. Well, the sun is a star. And uh, a star that has a mass of 2 with 31 zeros is a completely different object than the sun. Okay? It's still a star, but it's not just 10 times brighter than the sun. It's like 100,000 times, or 10,000 times rather, brighter than the sun. Uh, instead of living for about 10 billion years like we expect our sun to live, it will live for only a few tens of millions of years. Okay, so it's a very, very different object. Also, these stars will go out with a bang when they reach the end of their lives. They will explode as supernovas. They will not end their lives gently like our sun will. Okay. Um, so a star like this will be big, will be bright, uh, and will live a very, very short time, astronomically speaking. Much shorter than, for example, it took for life to originate on Earth. Okay. On the other hand, if you accidentally write a 2 with only 29 zeros, you're talking about a star that's barely a star at all. Okay, you're talking about a star that's one-tenth the mass of the sun, and that's about the smallest stars that can actually still be called stars. Those are the least massive stars that can actually burn with nuclear fusion on the inside to give off their own uh, nuclear energy. Uh, these stars are about one ten thousandth as bright as our sun. So even though they're only one tenth the mass of the sun, they're one ta ten thousandth the brightness, and they live virtually forever. Uh, their lifespans are many, many times the current age of the universe. So every star that's one tenth the mass of the sun that has ever been formed is still happily burning away uh, in its miserly way. It's uh, it's nuclear fuel. Okay. So you can see how important it is to get the zeros right. But writing it in longhand is very difficult to write, very difficult to read. Luckily, there is a shorthand way of doing it, the scientific notation way of doing it, 
is to write a 2 times 10 to the 30th power. Okay. This little number up here, 10 to the 30, this superscript, is called the exponent. Okay. So this little, little number up here is called the exponent. And uh, this number out front, by the way, the 2, is called the coefficient. And the only reason that's important is because we're going to be talking about what we do with exponents and coefficients when we get to uh, multiplication and division. All right, so let me tell you then how this works. Now, actually, it's been so long since I've learned scientific notation, I've forgotten how I actually learned it, and it's kind of second nature to me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with very, very simple examples and then move to more complicated examples and hope that uh, we all kind of get the idea of how it works. Okay. All right, so let's start with a really simple one, 100. Okay. Now, 100, uh, if we take it down to money, we know that 100 is 10 $10 bills, right? 10 times 10 gives you 100. So you could write 100, for example, as 10 times 10. Okay. But what's another way of writing 10 times 10? Well, I'm going to assume you say 10 squared, right? 10 to the second power. Okay. 10 squared is the same as 10 times 10. And uh, so that would be the same number as 100. Now you could also, you notice here that I don't have a coefficient in this number. And that's because the coefficient is 1. If you really want to, you can write that out. You can say 1 times 10 to the second power, or 1 times 10 squared. That's the same number as this. It's optional to write. When the, when the coefficient is 1, it's optional whether you write it or not. But if it helps you, by all means, write it down. OK. All right, so let's go to a, another number. Let's say 1,000. Well, 1,000 is what you have if you have, say, if you're lucky enough to have $10 bills. Okay? So if you have that, and you have 10 times 100. But we already know that 10 times 100, we know that 100 is the same as 10 squared. So we could just say it's 10 times 10 times 10, which is 10 to the third power, or 1 times 10 to the third power. Okay, see? So this is just another multiple of 10. We multiply 100 by 10, we get 1,000. So that's 10 times 100, or 10 times 10 times 10, which is 10 to the third power. Okay, so remember, 10 to the third power is not 3 times 10. It's multiplying 10 together three times. Okay. Let's take it one more step, one step farther. 10,000, okay? If you want to hit the pause button and and uh, try this yourself, you may. Okay. 10,000 is going to be 10 times 1,000, right? 10 times 1,000. And we already know that 1,000 is 10 times 10 times 10. So 10,000 is going to be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Or what's that? Well, that's 10 to the fourth. 10 to the fourth or 1 times 10 to the fourth. So, we have another example of scientific notation here. Now, it seems like, wow, this is really easy. It's just the, the it seems as though the exponent is just the number of zeros. And in some cases, that's true. In some cases where you only have one non-zero digit, that works out very, very nicely. But these numbers are very simple numbers. They're all perfect multiples of 10. And so, it works out quite nicely. Now, in the real world, we have other numbers. So, for example, let's say you buy a used car. Okay? And this is how much you pay for it. Okay? How would you say this number? Well, most people would say to their friends, oh, you know, they say, how much you pay for this thing? And you say, well, about $5,700. Right? $5,700. So, you could write that as 57 times 100, because it's as though you took $5,700 bills and paid it out for that car. Okay? So that would mean, well, 57 
And then 100, we, we know from up here, is 10 to the second power. So that's the same as 57 times 10 to the second power. Okay. Now some of you are probably saying, now wait a minute, that's not right. Well, yeah, it is right. It's just not the way it's usually written in scientific notation. Some of you are probably saying, wait a minute, I, I would not write it in scientific notation as this. This is a perfectly legitimate way of writing it in scientific notation. Okay. But there's another way of writing it. Instead of saying 57 times 10 to the 2, you could write it as 5.7 times 10 to the 3. Okay. What this is saying is, this is 5.7 thousand. Okay. 10 to the 3 is 1,000. 5,000 and 0 0.7 thousand, 5,000 and 7 tenths of a thousand, is the same as 5,700. Okay. This is the more standard way of writing it. Okay. 5.7 times 10 to the 3. Doesn't mean that this is wrong. It just means that it's a different way of writing the same thing. Okay. Now, you probably have heard people say, you know, nobody ever really says 5.7 thousand. But you've probably heard people say things like, you know, uh, the college's uh, budget has been reduced by 2.5 million, or the state is uh, the state's budget is short by 1.3 billion. Okay, things like that. Um, let me give you another example. Let's say we have 3,200,000. Okay. That would be the same as 3.2 million. Well, a million is 10 to the sixth. So this would be 3.2 times 10 to the sixth. So we would call that 3.2 million. 10 to the sixth is a million, 3.2 million. Okay. Now, I did this to kind of give you a justification of why this works. However, there's an easier way to do it a more mechanical way of doing it. Okay, I wanted you to see that this is the same as 57 hundreds and 5.7 thousands and 3.2 million. But a more mechanical way of doing it is just by saying this. Look, you've got a decimal point here with the number. Okay, the decimal point is not always written, but it's there at the very end of your number. So what you do is you move the decimal point over to the left. If you move it one place, it would be 570 times 10 to the 1. If you move it over two places, it would be 57 times 10 to the 2. If you move it over three places, then you've got 5.7 times 10 to the 3. You could even move it over four places if you wanted to and have it be 0.57 times 10 to the 4. You would rarely want to do that, though. Okay. So the point is, if you move the decimal place over, for every move of the decimal place to the left, you add an exponent. So that's why for this number here, you move it over one, two, three, four, five, six places, and you have 3.2 times 10 to the six. Okay? So even though I normally do not like to uh, teach in terms of rules, here's rule number one for scientific notation. Rule number one, every move of a decimal to the left adds one exponent. 